Once you understand that Steins Gate uses black hole theory to explain its time travel devices, your next question is probably, how did they get access to a black hole? After all, the closest known black hole to us is still 3,000 light years away. In fact, we've never even had a real photo of a black hole until about a year ago. The answer is pretty simple. The devices that they use in the show make a black hole before using it. Every time the Future Gadget Lab uses the phone wave, they create a mini black hole right there in Akihabara. But this opens up even more questions. How do we make a black hole? Can all microwaves create black holes? Is a kitchen microwave even capable of doing that? And how does the TV downstairs become the phone wave's key component for time travel? Welcome back to Anime Science, where we look at sci-fi concepts in anime, see how accurate they are in reality, and how weird we could get with them. If you haven't seen my first Steins Gate video on black hole theory, I recommend checking that one out first. Disclaimer, I'm not a physicist and most of this info will be incredibly simplified. Links to sources will be in the description below. Let's start simply with how do you make a black hole? Usually they're formed by a large amount of mass suddenly squished into a small amount of space. The most common cases of black holes are formed by stars that collapse in on their own gravity. To give you an idea of how much mass we have to condense into such a small space, if we wanted to make Earth into a black hole, we would have to suddenly compress it down to the size of a pea. It's not very easy, but physics tells us there's another way to make a black hole, energy. Einstein's theory of relativity tells us that mass and energy are related. They're basically different forms of the same thing. A 20 gram marble has as much energy as a 500 kiloton hydrogen bomb, but it's very difficult for us to convert the mass of a marble into pure energy. The bottom line though is that more energy means more mass and vice versa. So if we take something small and accelerate it really fast, we would essentially have a large amount of mass in a small amount of space, which is the process we would need to create a black hole. This kind of process can be most easy easily achieved with particles. And that's exactly what the Large Hadron Collider does. The LHC in Steins Gate is real, and it's the world's largest and most powerful particle accelerator. It's a 27 kilometer ring of superconducting magnets and acceleration structures used to boost the energy of particles, smash them together, and study their effects. The idea is basically if you get these particles moving fast enough and then smash them into each other, this would create enough energy that it would fit the process to form a black hole. Many were worried the LHC could accidentally accidentally destroy Earth by making a black hole that would swallow up the planet. But as it turns out, black holes are constantly shrinking and eventually disappear. But since most black holes we know about are made from a star, it takes a lot longer for that to happen because it's so much bigger. Whereas a mini black hole made from particles colliding would be so small that it would only exist for a fraction of a second. And even if it didn't shrink, it'd take longer than the current age of the universe to consume just a milligram of Earth matter. While we understand that the LA LHC could make a black hole theoretically, we haven't observed one as of yet. It's possible that it could have made one, but it'd be so small and disappear so fast that we haven't been able to detect it yet. For all we know, it could be making many black holes constantly that we just can't observe. And if we use the LHC for time travel, we'd need the data to go into this mini black hole that exists for such a short amount of time that we can't even observe it. So we already have potential problems going into this, but let's keep going. So a multi-billion dollar accelerator could theoretically make a mini black hole, even if it's too small for us to observe, let alone use, but can a regular kitchen microwave? To answer that, we have to talk about how a microwave works. Let's start with some general terms. A microwave oven is a kitchen appliance that generates microwaves. A microwave itself is a short radio wave in the micrometer range. A radio wave is an electromagnetic wave used for long distance communication. And an electromagnetic wave radiates in space and carries electromagnetic energy. So to put it all together, a microwave is a short radio wave that radiates in space and carries electromagnetic energy. These waves have no mass and move at the speed of light. Despite being so small, these waves actually have a huge amount of energy and can damage living cells and tissues. That's why your microwave has a big metal box inside that prevents these waves from escaping and it makes sure that you actually close the microwave before you use it. When you turn on your microwave oven, it converts electricity into microwaves. The metal walls will bounce the waves around and keep them in the oven, but they can go through some other materials. The waves make all the hydrogen atoms in the air vibrate, giving them energy and heat. So the waves go through your food and cook it from the inside and the outside. And even when the microwave stops, the atom vibrations are still cooking your food, which is why a lot of microwavable foods say to let it cool for a minute before eating. That's how a regular microwave works. And the LHC is basically a giant microwave oven itself in that sense. But the difference isn't just in size, it's also in speed. While a microwave makes particles collide to cook food, the speed of the particles
particles isn't nearly enough to create a black hole. The LHC might be able to because its super magnets ensure that the particles are going fast enough to study meaningful effects, but a commercial microwave? Probably not. But the phone wave is different from a regular microwave, isn't it? So let's take a look at how that's set up. On the surface, it's a microwave with a cell phone attached to it and a large CRTV television underneath it. The idea is that when the microwave is running and the TV is on, this creates a mini black hole with a naked singularity that sends data received by the phone into the past. There's a lot of working parts to this, but there's essentially three key steps we need to focus on for the phone wave to work. One, we need to create a black hole. Two, we need to reveal the singularity. And then three, we need to send the data through. To understand how we reach these steps, we'll have to talk about each component's role. Let's start with the cell phone and microwave. You might expect that the phone is just attached to the circuitry that would trigger the microwave's timer, but there's more. It's also directly connected to the oven's magnetron, which is what generates the microwaves. I'm assuming the idea was to combine the waves from both devices to speed up the cooking process. But what actually happens is that the waves are fusing and causing a chain reaction. The particles are colliding at near light speed, gaining mass and energy each time. Eventually, this process could theoretically create a black hole if it gets the particles colliding fast enough. At least that's how the visual novel explains it. Where it starts to fall apart is when you think about the fusing idea more. To start, the characters mention that fusing the waves means anywhere the waves of the phone would go would be microwaved. So they would essentially be microwaving a huge area because those waves go everywhere. This actually makes the phone wave a potential potential weapon of mass destruction that would basically kill everyone in Tokyo in three minutes. They don't know why the phone wave doesn't kill everybody, but I have two theories that might explain it. The first is that the waves aren't actually able to fuse, which means that all the real science behind this device would stop there because it just can't happen. And the second theory is that the black hole once made will immediately absorb all other waves, so it doesn't kill everyone. That one could work, but we need to look into whether or not they actually can fuse first. My research into whether or not they could came up short. The only thing I was able to find is that they need to be the same kind of wave. Since they're both radio waves, then it could be possible, but the shorter range of the microwave might be what makes it impossible. Maybe they do fuse, but only where the microwaves are, which is just inside the oven because of the metal box around it, but later they remove the door from the oven and it still doesn't kill everyone? I'm, I'm not sure. Maybe they just quietly gave all of Tokyo cancer every time they used it. Plus, even if the waves can fuse, would that really make the particles collide fast enough to generate a black hole big enough for us? to use, we haven't even been able to observe the LHC creating a black hole yet. It might be making them, but they'd be so small and leave so fast, I don't even know if we could use them. To continue, let's just assume we can fuse the waves, this creates the black hole, and the black hole prevents everyone near the phone wave from dying by absorbing the waves. After the black hole is made, a text message is sent to the phone connected to it. The waves that are received by the phone are then absorbed into the black hole, but this wouldn't send the data anywhere, as the gravity would be so great that nothing would survive the journey to the singularity. Instead, we need this to be a Kerr black hole, which rotates and forms what's known as a naked singularity. When a black hole spins, it has two event horizons, an inner and outer horizon. We can't actually see a singularity because the outer horizon doesn't reflect light, but the faster a black hole spins, the closer the horizons come together. And if you rotate a black hole fast enough, they would merge and shrink, exposing the singularity. This means a naked singularity essentially doesn't have an event horizon, and once it's revealed, we can send data into the exposed singularity. We're still still limited in how much we can send, so bananas will come back as gel, but data from a cell phone could be small enough to work, especially since it's an electromagnetic wave instead of a physical object. But even singularities have only been theorized but not observed, and a naked singularity poses a huge problem to the theory of general relativity, which is how we predict gravitational interactions. Some believe singularities exist but are kept in check by the cosmic censorship conjecture. It basically says when singularities form, they will always be hidden by an event horizon. We can can never observe them, so general relativity still works. But if that's true, then naked singularities aren't real. We might make a black hole and rotate it, but never enough to expose the singularity, so we can't send data back in time through it. You might have already guessed by now, but we need the CRT television to reveal the singularity. It acts as a lifter, which uses the electrons to make a black hole spin. CRTs, or cathode ray tubes, were older monitors that used three electron guns, red, blue, green, to heat cathodes. This emits a cloud of electrons 
inside the screen and generates a picture on your TV. In Steins Gate, it turns out that the 42-inch TV's electron guns were the exact right level of electron discharge to make the black hole spin and reveal the singularity. Using a lifter to rotate a black hole could work, and even a CRT being a lifter could work, but the show mostly uses coincidence and serendipity to say that it worked for them. As there's too many odd variables at play that could affect this process, they were extremely lucky to have consistent results in the show. Moving the microwave at all could have ruined this, for example. You'd probably need something much more finely tuned for this to work every single time. And remember, we only have less than a fraction of a second for the black hole to live, so we need to get it rotating quickly after it's made, and we need it rotating the exact right amount to expose the singularity to. If we ignore all the problems up to this point, we still need the data to stay intact and go where we want it to. The data would likely be heavily distorted or destroyed during its journey through the singularity. While the size of the waves used to send the data is small, it's only barely small enough to go through, hence the character limits they have on the text messages they use in the story. If the data survives the journey somehow, it's very difficult to tell where or when the data would actually go. Technically speaking, if the data is fine and arrives at the correct time, then it would just go to the intended phone number, since that's how these radio waves work. But there's just no guarantee it'll go where or when you need it to. These problems of sending data build up when you look at the time leap machine, which sends all of your memories to the past. But we'll cover that whole process in the next video. So in theory, that's how the phone wave would work. And while I pointed out many issues with the idea already, there's an even more important problem with using this method for time travel. I mentioned it in the previous video, but I want to remind you that this wouldn't actually change the past. In its journey through the singularity, the data wouldn't stay on your current world line. It will either affect or create a different world line or change your world line to a different one. If it affects or creates a different world line, then only a parallel world which you don't inhabit is affected. You wouldn't feel any change yourself. And if it changes your world line to a different one, then your memories change with you. So from your perspective, nothing changed. Most likely, affecting a different world line is what would happen if the phone wave actually worked. But that wouldn't make for much of a story. For Steins Gate, they had the world lines change and gave Okabe an ability called Reading Steiner, which lets him keep his memories despite changing world lines. This ability is entirely for the narrative of the story and serves no other real purpose. Although in Steins Gate Zero, it's actually suggested that everybody has Reading Steiner to a certain degree, and is used to basically explain where dreams and deja vu come from, glimpses into different world lines. So now you understand the science behind the phone wave and how much it won't work, so put your toolbox and duct tape away please. I worked really hard to research this as best as I could, and I hope I was able to explain it well enough for you to understand. If you have any questions or concerns related to this, let me know in the comments. And if you're a science expert that can help clarify or correct some of my details, I would highly appreciate it. A copy of the script for this video will be in the description if you want to read it. Any corrections will be made there and pointed out in the description. Thank you everyone for listening, and if you enjoyed this, consider supporting me on Patreon for just a dollar a month. In the next Anime Science, we'll talk about the Time Leap Machine and the actual Time Machine, so make sure to subscribe and bell for that. I have a few Anime Science ideas planned for after the third Steinsgate video, but if you have any ideas yourself, let me know in the comments. Follow me on Twitter, and I'll talk to you later.